Welcome to another episode, another episode of 72 Pin Connector. With us this Welcome. week, we have Ah. This podcast is brought to you in part by Comcast. When you need bandwidth, you need to go fuck yourself. Comcast. Josh. I, I, I wasn't prepared for such a hilarious intro. I, I'm Josh. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> and Adam. Welcome to another episode of the 72 Pin Connector Podcast. With us this week, we have Eric. Sup? Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I thought well we were going to roll with there. that. Well played. <laughs> Uh, so, um, just, uh, you know, you know, you guys, you guys laugh, stream. but we should, you guys laugh, but my discord seriously rent, went to red Oh, <laughs> just then. <laughs> oh, did it really? That's pretty yeah, funny. Yeah, no, I was flipping from red to green. So as Dobby pointed out, we, we just needed a freshie. So, uh, we yeah. wanted to bounce the stream and get us a freshie. Nice. That's I got insane. a freshie right here. Nice. Yes. Top that, nice. Top that bad boy off. Actually, I got me some of this, uh, not your mom's apple pie. From the people who did oh, like yeah. the not your grandfather's root beer. That's oh, okay. Pretty tasty. It's it's well, probably what went wrong is we didn't do any food connector stuff. Yeah. That's really what that went. That's, well, that's really what Clearly went down. Yeah. But now we're back. We're green. It's we green back. down there. We're actually streaming without buffering. You can see my what? ugly ass face. <laughs> oh, that's a bit harsh. Gents with that's us. harsh. Nah, it, it's, it's pretty legit. But anyway, what? How was y'all's weeks this week? So good. Oh, was so good. It was all right. It was busy. The, ju the juiciest. The <laughs> juiciest. Juicy. Do you have your freshy week? I had a freshy week. I'm telling you. <laughs> uh, what about you? What about, Tom? you? what about you, Eric? How was your How was your week? Are you doing crazy stuff? You being awesome? Nah, it was it was pretty dull. Though though, I will say, there was a little bit of snow. Uh, last night, I mean, it didn't even accumulate. Like, I had a little bit on my windshield, but there was nothing on the ground. And tonight oh. is another, um, it's a winter weather advisory for six hours. It doesn't even get below freezing. But I go to the grocery store to get a little bit of stuff. And this is how little they ever deal with snow. All the eggs were gone. All the <laughs> All eggs the were eggs. gone. Like, I had All to get an 18 pack and reach to the back to get it. <laughs> <laughs> wow. I was like, "What the fuck is going on?" That's uh, that's unfortunate. So, um, what about you, Adam? How was your week? I was busy. Um, I, we didn't have a winter advisory. In fact, it's for some reason like sixty degrees at night right now in November, which is odd. But that's fucking crazy. Ohio tends to do that. If uh, welcome to Ohio. If you don't like the weather here, wait a minute. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly how it is you know it's probably gonna snow tomorrow and then we'll have a hurricane the next day or something but you yeah know. but uh yeah week was busy um as discussed before i worked on some cosmonaut stuff trying to put a trailer together uh some audio stuff and then i spent a lot of time editing audio for a wonderful 52 podcast episode 52 when i was out there with you guys and we were struggling with our mic setup in the room and noise and bleed talk and. back and mic bleed and all those wonderful things that are just so fun to fix in post <laughs> <laughs> fuck it we'll it fix times. it in post it's, yes that's what it's all about man just fix it in post uh, oh so, my god <laughs> what about you josh normal week busy week gaming week uh yeah, gaming week for the most part. Nice. Lots of games, lots of good, good fun times. Lots of games. That's good. All that are involved in good fun times, stuff like that. <laughs> Hanging out with friends. Yeah, yeah, it's been nice. Um, Halloween weekend, pretty nuts. That's why I wasn't here. I wasn't mm. here for that because of Halloween weekend. Um, yeah, we always have a, a pretty big Halloween party, and this one was no no exception. Nice. Had to, we had one of our friends here, Bivens. Oh, oh nice. nice. That's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah, it was really cool. So he was here. He he, he hung out. Yeah, it was, it, was, it was a really good, really good time, man. Did you dress up for Halloween? No. Well, I did, but it was a really shitty costume. I'm really disappointed uh, about it. So I'm going to have to like, go like super, super hardcore next year. <laughs> What'd yeah. you do? 
What was it? Huh? If you're no, not, 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 not even going to talk about it. All let's, right. Just let's just pretend I didn't dress up. Okay. <laughs> Fair enough. I guess for the best. Good talk, everybody. But, uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, other, other than that, lots of good games. Playing a bunch of good stuff, but um, I guess we'll get to that later. Actually, we'll get to that now. Josh, yeah. what? What have you been doing? Oh, holy shit! What have you I'm been playing, playing. I'm playing all sorts of games, man. Whole bunch yeah. of games. Yeah. Um. Well, got back and was playing Rocket League. I was getting to that real quick because that can be over pretty quick. But I started doing the the dribble challenge. I don't know if any of you are familiar with the dribble challenge. But nope. it is super fun. So do you guys know like surf maps in CSGO? Yep. Yes. So it's a lot like that, but it's with uh, um, it's with Rocket League. <laughs> but you, you have to get the ball, usually the, get the ball to a destination. Mm-hmm. Um, and this one in particular, you get to the ball to the destination without the ball touching the ground. Um, okay. So it's really fun. So that's why it's called dribbling. You just like keep it on top of your car and you're like, all the way through. It's really, really hard. And I'm really yeah, trash but... at it. <laughs> that sounds like something that would make me very angry. I'm sure you've done it. Have you done? You did the original one, right? Uh, I did like a some sort of obstacle course. I yeah, there's a number a of them. dribble challenge. I never did that. Yeah, I, I, I feel like yeah. Well, the dribble challenge two is the one I'm talking about in particular, mm. and that one was is really good. Um, it's that French fries guy. He's done. Uh, he's done a number of the. He did like the wall one where it's like, where you're trying to get through to the end. It's not necessarily like does you don't have the ball with you. You just try to get to the end, mm-hmm. and the and the wall pushes forward, and then you're just trying to make it through to the very end. He did the one where um you have to do like the freestyles through the obstacle course. Did a couple of those. Hmm. Um, he did the first dribble challenge, which didn't have as much like um like if. It was really just kind of getting the ball to the other area into the right. little, little goals. Um, this one, you actually, like, for the whole thing, you can't touch the floor, which makes it really hard. Nice. But, yeah, I, I really like this kind. It kind of makes it a totally different game. I'd really like yeah. to see, like, a lot more of these done. Um, they're they're popping up all the time now, so, I mean, mm-hmm. I guess we just have to wait. <laughs> yeah, hopefully those catch on because that adds such a – different dynamic to the game it forces you to do things that you might not do yeah you wouldn't naturally uh, encounter during a match so when you're doing these things it kind of forces you to practice the mechanics that you don't get a chance to practice that often and it probably really rounds out people's uh mechanical ability in the game yeah yeah yeah. it's like this one especially is really nice because like it'll teach you to slow down the ball when you have it on top of your head which is really weird because of how like those um like how the mechanics work in rack that you really get to start to like finesse it into place and really Mm -hmm. really get down to like how everything works when you do stuff like that it's it's stuff Mm -hmm. that like speed runners get really big into and that's what we need it's like to find like really unique uh mechanics and abilities it's it's really like speedrunners that do it. Um, yeah, so that, that I I got into that. That was really fun. Um, oh man! Other than that, I played a bunch of games with Tom. But what were you, you playing? I can I can hear you guys now. I'm I'm oh alive. My God, Tom's <laughs> back just in time. I was oh, about to talk mad crap about you. It's perfect. So- yeah, so uh, thanks, Comcast. Tom My, uh, also has Comcast. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Why so don't you Irk, guys get it? Irk is currently taking all of the bandwidth in the Seattle area, um, and I'm getting the scraps. <laughs> so my latency to Discord was 900 milliseconds, then 57, then 823, then 63, and right now I'm holding it a steady 60. So, <laughs> all right. We'll, uh, we'll have to see. Let's go. Yeah. <laughs> all right. So Josh, oh, that's good. Anyway, yeah. Tom, I'm about to talk about you and your friends on oh, shit. <laughs> on national television. Uh, <laughs> and one in particular situation, we play Dark Souls. I'm, yeah, that's right. I'm getting Dark Souls and Rocket League out of the way. Out of oh, the shit. Nice. Yeah, yeah this Everybody is what's happening. Right now. Um, we tried to do uh, a little Dark Souls run with a friend of yours, right? So we do our... Um, our normal Dark Souls where where Tom carries me through Dark Souls and we try our best to get through it as a duo. Um, but this time it was really cool because we were trying to play with uh, with another friend, a third party. 
And uh, it was really fun because I, I got a chance to like, I started really late and they were already playing. So I got a chance to like speed run to catch up to them. And it went really good. I actually caught up to them. I beat a bunch of the bosses like faster than I expected solo. I still think Dark Souls is far easier to play by yourself than it is to play with a group. Still pretty confident about that. But yeah. when I finally caught up to you guys, there was an issue, Tom. Tom, there was there there was an issue, Tom. There there was. Tom? There was. There was so an issue. was there, Tom there was the issue? Because that tends to be a theme. Uh, believe it or not, I, I wasn't. I wasn't. Bad hard drives were the issue. Oh. So the game would take so long to load that it would actually decrease frame rate in Firelink while I was trying to load in NPC models. And then it would kick you offline and say, hey, uh, by the way, your FPS is too low to play online. Sorry, but we're going to switch you to offline mode now. Uh, so then to fix that, you've got to back out of the game completely and then back in. So we got out of the game, we re-verified, we did all this shit, did all the proper things for when your game is fucking broke ass, and then it wouldn't even launch. It just yeah. stopped functioning completely. Not even to the title screen, just stopped completely. Um, but luckily, yeah, was, luckily, as of, as of a couple days ago, it is working again, just barely, but uh, this hard drive is on its last legs. So a replacement is being ordered. You That's good it. because I was really excited. I really wanted to play through as a cleric. I haven't had the chance to play through as like a cleric. I like the idea of um, of really getting into like the healing portion, and it, it, it and they revamped it. They rebuilt. They redid it. They redid it. It was so cool because now, like before, you weren't able to heal your other parties without like one particular spell, and that's all you get. Mm -hmm. But. Now, when you use any healing, it heals everybody in the area. It's fucking awesome. And I'm really excited to play that. But just to fix the shit. He's got to fix his shit. Got to fix that shit. Oh. Got to fix that shit. Got to get him a fresh Let's go, man. I, I want to do it. I want to play through. I want to play through the rest of Dark Souls as a cleric. Not the whole thing, because me and Tom have to finish ours first. But that was a game I played. And that was a game I played with Tom. There's another game I played with Tom. Tom. Do you remember that game that we played together? Um, I yeah, thought we weren't going to talk about that. You're right. I'm like Josh. <laughs> <laughs> You're right, Tom. It was Fortnite. <laughs> Let's not talk about the other night. Anyway. <laughs> yeah, no, we played Fortnite. We played Fortnite Battle Royale. We played a bunch of it, actually. Quite a few rounds. It nice. was good. I, I'm really bad I, at it. I tried to play that with Tom, but the game would not let me play. And the game still doesn't let you play, right? No, it's still... I uh, we queued up. I installed all all the updates. Whatever we queued up. Um, search for a match. Finds a match. Switches to the loading screen. Um, it's chilling. We're talking, and Tom's like, "Where are we dropping?" And I said, "Well, I'm still on the loading screen." And Tom says, "I'm jumping out of the bus." So my loading screen gets caught. Uh, progress bar all the way down doesn't go up just kind of chills there forever so i've tried a lot of things uh graphics cards all kinds of stuff um updates but i can't play i tried it again today still can't play so i don't know yeah well, that I, sucks, still, I still haven't uh, downloaded it to try it what what are you doing no, i Get still on haven't that. done it Oh my god, it's so good. Did play. It's so, so, not. so it's so Yeah, it's fun. great. You can jump on, it. you can play 20 minutes and be done. Yeah, it was great. It was super good. I just haven't done it. Um, it's not that I'm against it. I just have other stuff I've been playing. You really gotta try it out, man. It's good stuff. I've it's like to try it out. What's really good about it is that it's fast. And if you're not like super invested into the time period that you're going to like you, you have like a certain time period you got to get into for PUBG, like, and you got to do the whole thing, and you have to do that all in one sitting. But like with Fortnite, you're like in, you die, and it's over, right? But you jump mm -hmm. right back in immediately after, and you go and you fight people. Like you don't have to like set up your gun, equip your gun, put the scope on there, put this thing on there, duct tape it all together, go out there, find heals, get your bandages ready, go into a fight, and then die. Like you could just go pick up a gun and die 
in that order like it's it's so yeah. much faster and that's what i like about it especially when you're just like playing a little bit more like i don't want to say casually because it's still the same game but it's it's not as much investment uh, and that's really what it's yeah. about i i think they're different enough that you don't really they're not just the same game no no they're far from the same game what my point is is like this one in particular um you're just in it and you're done faster. It's more of the mm-hmm. time frame that you're dealing with, like the yeah. situations. Like me and Tom found it super weird when we weren't attacked in the, in like every five minutes. You know, like there's like a there's like a two like a full two minute interval where we weren't attacked and we we were like, what's going on? I'm really confused. <laughs> Feel super uncomfortable, but uh, it was good. Yeah, the the thing. So I actually really like. Fortnite Battle Royale compared to PUBG. I think it's a it's a different game for sure, but I enjoy it far more. And, and the reason is PUBG's uh, you know tension release graph is completely fucked up. If you're used to uh, horror or action movies or horror action games, you've, you've got like this graph, right? And and you, you start out and like the tension's rising and it's rising and it's rising and, and then something happens and it, it goes back down, right? And then it rises. But you've got like this cool nifty curve thing to keep you engaged, right? right With PUBG, right. it's literally, it's like 30 minutes of just like, the tension building insanely high and then like you just die or or you win, you know, whatever. But there's there's no release. Every match is completely stressful. It's just super tense and and there's none of this up and down at all. Uh, with Fortnite, I don't know how because the gameplay is very, very similar, but it doesn't mm-hmm. feel as stressful. It, it I, feels more casual, more relaxed. I wouldn't say that Battlegrounds doesn't have that up and down. Um, it's It's so dependent on match. But one thing I do notice about Battlegrounds is that now I have played a couple matches of Fortnite Battle Royale, but I haven't played it much. I was wanting to check it out more. Mm -hmm. Um, But it seems like cover is way more important in Battlegrounds. Oh, yeah. In Fortnite, everything is just so open. There's no there's no shrubs and bushes. There's no grass that sticks up. There's nothing to hide behind. There's no, you know, chest high walls everywhere, that kind of stuff. Um, which is something that I'm not sure I like about it, but I think is maybe that's part of it. Maybe you feel more vulnerable in battlegrounds because there are so many more places people could be that you can't just immediately see. Right. But yeah, I do. I do feel that up and down with battlegrounds. You know, depending. Yeah, on that, it's just you know, a different. I mean, it's definitely a different flavor. It's just that, mm-hmm. like, especially because okay, so you have you have a bunch of things working against you in Fortnite. And this is this is why you have the argument back and forth this is why people like one over the other which is great yeah. and there's a preference and preferences are yeah. great because because yeah. you know uh, when you have that competition it really makes both games better like yeah that and means they're, they're gonna fight they're they're different but, enough that you could somebody can play both back and forth like no right problem. You and this to is, pick one right exactly they're, di- they're just a part of the same genre but my point mm-hmm. is is for battlegrounds you have a very you have a much bigger map you have a huge yeah. map and mm-hmm. then you also have um like a more you have a more in, invested time period so you have a longer yeah. time period for you to get set up like if you don't mm-hmm. drop somewhere where you're going to fight right away you have all this time to be invested in your character right like mm-hmm. who you are and what you're doing right mm-hmm. uh you have all that time to get invested in, in what you're doing and then when you get in the situation where you hear a firefight and you're in a house and you're like hunkered down you're all sweating and like <laughs> you're panicking your heart's racing you're like what yeah. am i gonna do oh my god i gotta get out of this because you're actually invested in the character right right like you, you've created this character for yourself and you're you're there you've gone through this expedition to find this gun that you've been dreaming of all night long Right, and then now you're there, and you're in the situation, and you're and you're sweating. <laughs> For Fortnite, yeah. it's like it's like you drop, and you just pick something up, and you just go shoot somebody. Like there's not a lot of investment. There's not as much investment because it's like the map's much tighter. There's no yeah. modifications on your guns. You can or can't like if you don't find meds, you're just gonna die. <laughs> like you're just gonna die because the guns just melt people so hard so fast that mm. if you don't have shields there's nothing to get invested in basically it's two shots anyway so mm. you just have to get everything ready and then you die and then you jump and then you jump back into another queue and the queues start so fast in Fortnite. like as soon as yeah, they have I enough people like you're in I like that so 
you don't have mm-hmm. to worry about that investment of time and that's yeah. really the biggest portion of uh of, of gaming that really makes you feel like you know that that's what builds that stress is because you're going to lose that time because time is important we're humans you know we have only a certain amount of time right dark souls <laughs> dark souls makes a good point in chat though that it depends on how you want to play Battlegrounds. You can still play that. You can drop Pachinki every time. You can get to the action right away. You don't have to have that huge build-up time investment unless you actually get far enough to for it to each match to take that much time. Right. But, and then um, I I do get what you're saying though because uh, Fortnite has less options for your character. right. Exactly. So it, but it's kind it, of streamlined, we, and you know, it's smaller. Uh, right. There's no gun attachments, not as much cover. Everything about it is designed, it seems like, to be faster. Oh, so, yeah. And that's, and, and that's, that's, what, what, that's what makes the game so different, which is what I like about both of them. Right. And when you do drop those areas, it feels a lot like Fortnite. Like when you drop at like a high pop area and you just pick up a shotgun and you fucking go. Yeah. Like yeah. it feels like Fortnite the whole time. Like mm-hmm. that's how Fortnite feels from beginning to end. You're always pushing somebody, right? Yeah. Um, except you get to destroy the building they're in. If yeah. <laughs> that's what, the only difference. That's a big I separation. think that is a but cool mechanic. I really want to play it really because cool. of that. I wish there was more. F- I mean, I'm sure there's going to be once people figure out how to play and figure out how to build stuff quickly. And I was watching somebody stream. Um, I can't remember who it was. It was one of the people that, that used to stream Battlegrounds all the time. I don't remember who. who but I was watching them play it. I don't know. Ninja. It could have been... Ah, that's gonna be amazing. One of uh, those. Uh, one of those guys. Anyway, but um, I saw how they were using the building, you know, on on the fly. And my experience with bat- uh, Fortnite, since I didn't play Fortnite, Fortnite, I just played Battle Royale, and I only played three or four matches of it. You know, mm-hmm. I don't have that experience with the building, so I didn't really use it hardly at all. But these guys were, you know, everywhere they go, they jump and then they build four walls around them real quick, and then they build a staircase and they look up it and peek and look around, and they mm-hmm. were doing all this within the span of seconds, and it was cool to see. And I want to see where that takes the the game because without those weapon attachments and with all the cover, you know, it doesn't have the cover of battlegrounds. Right. I think that, that adds in that missing depth of gameplay. Right. No, exactly. And it, I think it adds a more mechanical element than mm-hmm. like the attachments. Like the attachments are like an RNG element. It's like another RNG element on mm-hmm. top of the no- already RNG element of a Battle mm-hmm. Royale series, mm-hmm. right? Like, mm-hmm. will I find a silencer? Will I find a suppressor? Will I find a, a compensator? Will I find a scope? Like, who knows? Yeah. You know, I'm just going to go for it. But with mm-hmm. like the building aspect, like lop down that tree and let's see what kind of things I can build. Like uh, people were building ramps straight up at at first and then people are shooting the bottom of the ramp out and then their whole ramp falls and they die. Right. So now they're building three wide, They're like building three wide and building up and building over. So they can't just demolish the whole thing in one go. Yeah. You know, so there's just like, there's this like uh, back and forth as far as like mechanics versus like the counter to that mechanics. So I'd really like to see what happens if it, catches on as like a, a more popular thing and you get a lot more of uh, a lot more really outlandish ideas going in because they're not even using some of the more complicated building aspects that you do in the main game so are there actually less options to build or people no no they're using they're, stuff yet they're not using like okay so here's one mm-hmm. so one thing people don't use and i haven't seen anybody use is the uh the jump pads there's jump pads and when you hit the jump pads and you go super far, super high, and you land, yeah. you don't take any damage. There's no fall damage when you jump oh. off the jump pad. Nice. And I don't think any of the actual like PUBG turned Fortnite streamers know that. Mm-hmm. So it would be really interesting to see a lot of those guys start launching themselves into other bases. Yeah. It would be really cool to see. Like It would turn into more of a Quake feel. Yeah. And if anyone's oh. played Quake, like a competitive Quake, mm-hmm. it's fast. insane. It is so how, how so quick fast. You build something like that. Like how it, if you were pretty, just playing right now, how long would it take you to select that in the menu and then build the thing and resources you need and all that stuff? So you can set it as a quick slot. So if you know the jump pads are fast and you know, you're about to get in a skirmish, you can have that as a quick slot. So you can build like four okay. walls, a platform, and then the jump pad, and you can jump over someone's base like immediately. Okay. So it's like, it's like boom, 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 boom. Yeah, it sounds boom, like boom. they've really got a good system put together for building in that game. 
Oh I've yeah, played other, I've played other first person games where there's some base building and even when it's, you know, feature rich and cool, it's still kind of clunky to do. It takes time to select stuff and place it and rotate it and stuff. And it seems like right. this got a really quick way of just, you know, accessing what you need, building it, and there's no wasted time. It's not it doesn't feel clumsy. What's what makes it fast is the fact that you can place an item and walk on it immediately. Yeah. So so like there's a whole building process, but that's all a part of just the building health. It's not a part of the actual uh, hitbox. So if like you were to build a platform, as soon as you place that platform, you can walk on it. Mm -hmm. As soon as you place a ramp, you can walk up it instantly. You don't have to wait for the whole thing to be built. There's no like weird hitboxes where like half of it's built, but you'll fall through that crack. So you could just walk up it like it's one big platform. So it's really good. That's good. So I'd really like to see them take that to the next level. Yeah, I'm looking forward but, to playing more of this. Yeah, I would. Lo- yeah, let's 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 do some of that. We'll stream it. It'll be good. Everyone, come watch. It'll be great times. <laughs> once, once I figure out what my issue is with it, then I can play, and then we can do this. <laughs> I, know, right? I don't know. Um, it might be just an uninstall thing. Yeah. But anyway, um, I I got ready. Here's a short one. I started uh, Path of Exile. Nice. Path of Exile what do you is think? Pretty so, cool. What, what I've heard of it, but what it's, exactly is it? Okay, so if you've played like a Dungeons and Dragons esque game, have you played any of those? Mm-hmm. Have you played any like World of Warcraft and MMOs, something like that? Anything like that? I've played Guild Wars, Wars One briefly. Okay, well, it's yeah, it's, <laughs> that's a kind of a reach. Still, yeah. there's a bunch of like Dungeons and Dragons esque things, uh, esque games out there. There's one in particular called uh, uh, Dark Arisen. It's really good, or not Dark Arisen? What is it called? Uh, anyway. Um, it's a yeah, Baldur's Gate Dark Alliance, and it plays exactly like that, which is great. It's just um a, your basic D and D style game, but like more of an MMO experience. And I only got it ready to play with Dark Souls. Nice. <laughs> I only got my character through the first portion to play with Dark Souls. So Dark, Dark Souls, Souls, I'm Vader, ready. Friend, not Dark Let's... Souls video game. Right, Dark Souls Invader. <laughs> <laughs> Dark Souls Invader. I'm ready. My body's ready. Let's make this game happen. We've been play we've been talking about playing this for months. Probably not months. Maybe a couple weeks. I don't know. Either way, the planning was I'm involved. ready. Yes, it's great. So far, the gameplay is great. It feels like Darker is uh Dark Alliance. I'm amped about it. Let's go, dude. Let's go. I'm ready. <laughs> I love uh, Dark Alliance. <laughs> I actually did something incredibly cheap with Dark Alliance. What did you um, do? So they you know when you get to those type of RPGs, they tell you when you get max level. The experience needed for the next level is 999,999,999. Is there a way of mm-hmm. saying you can't level up? Yeah. Okay. So what I was doing is I had the hardest boss in the game. I had him one hit. I saved. So he's one hit away from death. There's a recall okay. mechanism in that game that allows you to go to a previous save with your current state. So what I was doing oh. is I was one hitting this guy, picking up the loot... <laughs> recalling one hitting this guy picking up the oh, loot, recalling that's... so i was killing this Cheesing guy the game hard 20 times in a minute at least and i'm getting this expensive <laughs> item i'm like this is awesome um <laughs> and well then all done. of a sudden i got this level up notice i'm like what the fuck are you telling me i was max level it leveled me up to level one Ah, I get wrecked. <laughs> I hit, I hit the experience. Wrecked, no, no, no. Here's what it goes so down it looped, to. It, looped, it right? looped. Everything stayed. All my stats. So I was able to oh, put nice. my charisma so high that I was buying things for less than I sold them back for. <laughs> That's awesome. I broke That's, the fucking uh, game. Like the, the Bullers Gate series is really good because it's all oh, rooted oh. in... Oh. I've played uh I played Champions of Norath. We've had this discussion yes. before. I'm just it's now coming back to me. Champs of Norath oh, is the same thing I as Dark Alliance. Played a lot of Champions of Norath. Okay. Yeah, the Boulder's Gate series is really good like at pulling out like the D&D lore and a lot of the D&D stuff. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I guess that, that's the technical term, I think. Yes. Um <laughs> and the I feel there's stuff. two different levels right, of exactly it. Exactly, that's have, what it is. You have the classic which is like rooted heavily in traditional D&D, and then you have Dark Alliance. Which is like right, the pop which is D D. This is much mm-hmm. more Dark Alliance, but like Boulder's Gate did a really good job doing like a um what do you call it? More like a 
real Dungeons and Dragons feels like. There's a couple of characters like there's one particular, and I'll always remember this when I played uh, Boulder's Gate. There's one particular character that if you like pissed her off, she turned into a dragon. You're like, oh fuck, she was a dragon the whole time, and then she just shits on you. Yes, which is oh. great because not a lot of games do like the dragons as almost like gods or deities, like beyond gods. Like they're like they're mm-hmm. impossible to kill. There's and it's uh, and I'd really like to see I'd really like to see uh, like more games make characters that are like so over the top like that. Mm-hmm. But uh, in Boulder's Gate, they did that. In this one, I hope there's a lot of that, where they have like like really gnarly uh, villains that you have to deal with. But I don't know. I'm really excited. It's really fucking cool. Nice. So yeah, Very exactly. Cool. The you um, had one other thing you were playing pretty heavily. Yeah. Okay. So, um, my, uh, Whitney, my wife, got me Bayonetta for my birthday. Um, the first, nice. uh, the first Bayonetta, the first. I guess there, there is a sequel, but I played this for the first time. It was awesome. <laughs> that game was what? fucking awesome. Like I'm gonna it? tell you that right now. So Bayonetta is like, um, like you play as like a a witch, I guess, and then it's basically like a gods versus like devils kind of thing right mm-hmm. so you have like the different planes it's very generic as far as like the the lore is concerned mm-hmm. you have like you know you have gods you have the devil and then you have like humans and then you have like a fourth thing i don't know i'm, I'm not following the lore too good <laughs> is it like but an it's, rpg or what it's 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 a beat-em-up like a kind of oh. like a batman but more like a devil may cry so if you've ever played oh, devil okay. may cry yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. devil may cry 100 percent um like through and through like from from like the style of fighting to the like cheesy, cringeworthy uh, dialogue, it is spot on. <laughs> that I, is I amazing. Had it pulled like, up what is whenever it, you first started streaming, and I'm watching uh-huh. this. I'm like, this is campy. This is cheesy. This is just over the fucking top. But goddamn it, it's making me smile about it. <laughs> oh my god, it's so good. Like the like starting with just like the dialogue out of the gate dialogue's ridiculous like it's just like as cheesy as cheesy can get it's as ridiculous as ridiculous can get mm-hmm. um and then you have like just the gestures your character's making and like it's like there's certain c- scenes that are like sexualized certain scenes that are like way way more violent than they need to be so a lot of them are self-aware campiness this oh just, very self-aware this isn't like Absolute. bad design this is like this is intentional this is yeah, it's, it's absolutely the that. Row yeah. of Devil May yeah. Cry games. Yes, <laughs> yes, exactly. Okay. <laughs> it, it, I mean, Devil May Cry does does the exact. It's literally Devil May Cry, like like Dark Souls saying, literally Devil May Cry with a girl. It's the same kind of feel. Okay. It, except I played Devil May Cry and I like Devil May Cry, and I feel like this is better. Devil May Cry like, was a little more serious, though, wasn't it? No, absolutely no. not. I like, no, I zero much. aspects of Devil May Cry was serious. Like, there was okay. no aspects of Devil May Cry that was even remotely serious. Like, okay. going through this one, it's the same way. Like, there's a chick fighting on a motorcycle. Like, there's all sorts of stuff, just like Devil May Cry. But I like this better because of, like, just how it felt to play. Devil May Cry has the same, like, guns, same exact mm-hmm. thing. Like, Devil May Cry has, four, has two guns, she has four, she shoots their feet, why not? Um, it's the same concepts but like I like how fluid the fighting felt the the actual like every single area I got into there was way more enemies every single time I got to a new area there was more enemies I, I'm still seeing new enemies I haven't encountered the same enemy unless it was like a grunt mm-hmm. twice like there's a couple okay. times that like they'll say, okay, well here's this guy and here's this guy with his brother, but mm-hmm. it's like it's a different fight, you know. Um, there's like a parry mechanic where you re- it's really about like dodging, right? So you dodge at just the right time, and then you interact like the slow mo mode, which is like vital to doing most of the game. And they 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 just really understand how the mechanics are supposed to work. They understand like, okay, this is how our game is played. Let's challenge the player with our mechanics. Let's challenge the player by saying, okay, I have an ability to dodge. How do we make that a part of the core game? And how do we challenge the player to deal with that dodge? Mm-hmm. And then they evolve it and they keep putting they keep putting layers and layers and layers on top of that. And it's so mm-hmm. good. 
it's so good forces like you that. to actually learn the game and not just absolutely absolutely and they really nail it like um for instance there's the the dodge mechanic gives you this slow-mo feel right mm-hmm. and when you hit the when you hit the dodge just at the right time you slow down time but there's mechanics in the game where you're like okay you have to get across this path and you have to dodge at just the right time so that you interact you engage the slow-mo mechanic so you can actually traverse this path because it's moving so fast. Mm-hmm. So it really feels like like a Devil May Cry, but more like a God of War. They have all the crazy cinematics, all the crazy like uh, quick action, uh, quick button timing things. I forget what that's called. Something like that. Some along the lines. <laughs> but it's amazing, and I I couldn't recommend this enough. I know like it has a crazy good reviews, has really good reviews all over the place. Mm-hmm. But um, I mean, I'm streaming it right now. I've been streaming the majority of it. I think I'm a good chunk of the way through it. But I keep going. I suck at it. But you yeah. know, if you want to watch someone suck at Devil May Cry or uh, uh, Bayonetta? Bayonetta. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I might, yeah, I might um, have to go back and watch the vods of that. How um, you said there's a sequel already. So how old is this series? How like, uh, it? it's pretty old. Uh, uh, I'll, let me let me check with my sources. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Oh nine. So it looks like it came out in two thousand nine. Is that what I'm reading right? Yeah, oh nine. Yeah, so it came out in oh nine. So this is pretty old. Um, the sequel came out later than that. Uh, two thousand like twenty fourteen. Fourteen. Yeah, September twentieth, twenty fourteen. Sequel came out, which is really weird. Okay, so the game is like pretty sexualized in certain aspects of it, which is like you know it all it always breeds that like can women be sexy all that stuff and that's always something you want to dive into um but uh we're not even gonna do that but it's really interesting because bayonetta 2 came out as a wii u exclusive which is a very family driven system right like a lot of the games that come out for that i know i know there's some some games that came out for the wii but uh that were a little more violent and, and stuff like that but nintendo's a very a very very much uh, uh, a family system right especially like some of their bigger platforms like smash right smash yeah. is more of like a family game but bayonetta is in smash brothers now oh really Which i find a weird uh, like i find that kind of a she strange totally decision. Is. <laughs> she's absolutely a character a playable character Neat. this chick that actually wears no clothes her clothes are actually just her hair <laughs> so when she does like bigger okay. attacks yeah her clothes go away <laughs> oh, uh, uh. Do they have titty physics? Uh, I don't think so. Oh. <laughs> I think it's more of an ass man's game. Just saying. Anyway, let's okay. turn around and keep going. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, you you mentioned Super Smash Brothers briefly. So I I'm gonna take this opportunity to shamelessly plug our postcast game, which is Brawlhalla, a free to play Super Smash Brothers thing. It's on yes. Steam and it's free and it's a very small download. So if you'd like to play with us afterwards, oh, it runs you know, pretty good. Do. do not let frame rates at the main menu the first time you launch it shock you and scare you away. It actually does run well once you get into a match. Mm-hmm. Uh, private lobbies update players. If we get more than eight of us in there, we will do our old Super Smash Brother rules. We have three people waiting. The three bottom people get the fuck out. <laughs> Nice. We'll so rotate like, through. Do we want to do the, the bottom three? Do we want to do the top three so we don't have one top person three. dominating? <laughs> I That's like that. For the record, I, I, I always said top three. Well, right, I let's don't make think a complex we... algorithm to take like the second we'll place that. and then like the last place and then the, you know. I don't think Sweet. we're I'll going make a to have to worry about it. it. Should be make, fine. A pre- make a spreadsheet. I'll get the calculator out. And we'll. We'll crunch some numbers. This yeah, kind of fine. game, you don't have to worry about that because people will gang yeah. up, and it's not something I can see any of us being super good at. Well, let me put this by like you that speak level for of yourself. Good. I'm a competitive Brawlhalla player. There is a very deep and uh, financially <laughs> yeah okay large and stable. So, uh, just an idea about how small the download is, you guys. Um, I started the download as soon as he mentioned Brawlhalla, and it's done. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it is seriously like 200 megs, so yeah. go pull okay. it. And yeah, just download it. It seems like it should be or a good time. But, yeah. Adam, you went yes. ahead and did that shameless ass plug. So how about you yeah. tell us about some of the shit you've been playing? Oh, yeah. So, uh, the last postcast game I was a part of, 
was Team Fortress 2. Um, which we played some. Uh, it had a big update. We played some new maps, I guess. I've never been a TF2 guy, uh, so I wasn't like super thrilled on it, but you know, it was that. <laughs> it's kind of cool to see a game that well, old well, still getting updates and stuff. Well, there's a particular reason why that got updates. That I mean, it seems like a lot of their updates recently are, are reaching for like kind of like an esports y feel, right? Like anybody have any um no, uh, anybody look in, anybody look into that that I whole I uh, think this recent stuff isn't. They added a competitive mode. You're right. They did that right. about a year ago. They added a competitive mode. This was um a lot of polish around the edges. They mm-hmm. did a lot of uh, UI stuff that's really pretty, really, in the end, doesn't affect the game. It just makes you feel better about the game because of the way they're presenting it. You're saying that in the end, it didn't even matter? Oh, <laughs> oh he did it. He know, did I was going to keep running with lyrics, but I was like, no, that would sound way too forced. <laughs> yeah. um, but there did is you, a really cool mechanic. time fly by as the pendulum No, swings? shut up. <laughs> <laughs> We're not Lincoln parking this cast. Ticks like the way. <laughs> Um, man i just um, don't know it's it's just so unreal (laughs) i'm gonna fucking mute all of you guys but Uh, um there was one thing they did add that was interesting payload race one of the new maps you had to get the bomb onto the railroad tracks and then a train had to come and get it typically in a payload race you get the bomb to the goal and it blows up instantly Mm -hmm. on this one you had to get the bomb to the goal which was on top of the railroad tracks and then a train had to come and hit it. The bomb could get moved off of the tracks before the train got there. So you can hit your goal and then get pushed back and not win. It was a really oh, cool sick. mechanic. It was really cool. It was a really well-made map. Huh, that sounds awesome. So it's, a, it's not just a map. It's a full game mode. Well, the game mode well, was already there. Uh, it's the way they implemented yeah, the map. Payload is old. Right, no, I know that. But, the, like the same but game pushing it to a point... Yeah, to, to blow up a train, like putting it in front of something, that's new. Usually it's just, ah, oh, push it to the X, and when you get to the oh, X, you win. The X. Congratulations, everybody. Right, but this, right. was, this was push it in front of a train, which was cool. Because you could get your whole team, like, right there on the bridge, on the tracks, and then the train comes by, and you just nearly miss it, but four of your people get run over by a train, which gives the enemy team a chance to push their shit onto the tracks. It was... Just good. That's awesome. <laughs> and then depending on which way the train's coming, if you're both on the tracks, one of you will win, one of you will lose. Oh, nuts. Mm. So, yeah, it was, I really liked the maps. I thought the new maps were really good, really well done. Yeah, they, they seemed well done, definitely. It was the most fun uh, I've had in TF2, which I typically am like you, and I'm not a huge TF2 guy. Yeah. yeah it wasn't hateful. It was, it was a decent time. It, it was better because of the company involved. Um, I played some Rocket League and Battlegrounds, uh, usual stuff. Not a lot of Battlegrounds. I played a little bit. I've got that Battle Royale itch that can't be scratched by uh, Fortnite right now. So (laughs) I played a little bit of Battlegrounds. Played a little Rocket League, nothing new there. Um, Then I played a new game, and this game was free on Twitch Prime, and it is called Layers of Fear. Oh, man horror experience whatever i don't want to call it survival horror because there's no like resource management or enemies really it's kind of like it's a puzzle kinda, horror. oh yeah it's it's full-on puzzle it's, horror yeah it's it's definitely there's a little bit of puzzle and a lot of just it feels like a haunted house ride like you're just kind of along for the ride very it, supernatural style horror that's not uh it's not like suspense horror it's more paranormal jump scares ish there's some jump scares I, I think people overstate how many jump scares there are in the game but it is very you know oh you walked into a room and the lights all shut off automatically and then like the painting started melting off the wall and then you left the room but oh that's not the same room you came out of from before it's a yeah. different place altogether oh no I my, take, okay. <laughs> my takeaway that they did a lot in that game was have yeah. dolls and little kids run their heads into yeah. walls there's some themes how yeah. many times did they fucking do that like i watched like, the one room you were in this doll well, that, got out of a crib and was banging its head against the crib but that was a themed area that was that part of the game had a lot of those you know, children. 
Uh, okay, and so because so part there, of the story involved that. Okay, that's I didn't true. know the story. All like, I saw was a lot of kids running their head into a wall. <laughs> okay, that was hilarious. Uh, I watched that whole. Yeah, you were streaming. That was a funny bit. Yeah, you were streaming, and it was, and that was pretty funny. But that game was spooky, and you handle it weird. <laughs> You're a weird, <laughs> weird. Man. I'm gonna weird. put that right out there. Like, okay, like you, when it comes to scary games, you are weird. Maybe, <laughs> maybe you're not weird. Maybe I'm weird. That game was scary. That was spooked, and I was watching you play it, and there was a bunch <laughs> of spooky things. And me and Dark Souls, okay, me and Dark Souls are right there. All right, yeah. That game was spooky. I think we should dual cast the same game, <laughs> yeah, at the same time. And have you go through it. It's very spooky. And me go right. through it shitting my pants. Like, <laughs> like you're like, oh, oh, look at that. There's a bear. Yeah. It's very spooky. I'm like, don't fucking go in there, dude. Like, <laughs> if you go in there, I'm going to cry. <laughs> like, it's going to get really, <laughs> it's going to get real emotional for everybody. It's, it's different. <laughs> I think it's different when you're streaming a game like that. Because you you kind of got your buddies in the chat with you experiencing it and... You know, because we're they're going to be there to definitely. protect you from the ghost. And part of what we're doing, we're playing spooky horror game bingo, which I have the card right here, which Don't might be that. backwards on stream. Sorry, but um, no, it's good. You know, oh it's wait, there some... was no, there was no TV static. No, not, not at yet. all. Wow, no, I think it's okay. set. It's set in an earlier time period. There's not a lot of electronic devices in this house. All right. Um, but no, we're we're we've almost got a bingo where we just need. Child giggling, or a children's lullaby, neither of which we've had. We had some children in the game, some creepy dolls, and you know your character in the game has a kid, but you know no luck, no luck with that so far. But we're doing pretty well. A lot of tropes here. We had a wheelchair upside down. Uh, light suddenly goes out. We had a door open and closed by itself. Uh, go back through. Go back through the same door, but it leads to a different place. We had floating chairs and tables. You know, I saw all that, that stuff. That was absolutely confirmed. Jump scare. Babies crying. Yeah, it had uh, a lot of this stuff. <laughs> but it, it felt like a haunted house ride. It was, you're kind of lost in this ever-changing house. You know, you go through doors that don't lead to the same place as before. Your dude's, you know, hallucinating all over the place. Um, it's pretty cool, though. I liked it. Um it's not the scariest game I've played for sure. Uh, maybe this type of horror, which I thought would be worse for me than other types. Like, but I find myself being more bothered by games where you're being chased, where you're in danger. I never actually felt like it was in danger with this game. And maybe that's part of why I was handling it pretty well. But a game like uh, Soma, the first Outlast, uh, those were, you know, Alien Isolation. Those games are definitely, you know, I have to take breaks. I have to stop and be like, all right, let's let's take a break from this. My heart is pounding. I'm sweating. <laughs> you know, I, never kind of I never finished. I never finished Outlast. Yeah, because I was so scared. I I am hiding under a bed currently in Outlast, and I will <laughs> never come out from underneath that bed. So so to be <laughs> honest, when it comes to Outlast, I'm not going to spoil it. But the fact that you didn't experience the very end of that game, I think, uh, is probably better. <laughs> I, I actually finished that game, and I, I it got weird. I'm not sure I like where the the story went, but it's kind of like a sound. Is it like was like, not really about the story so much? Alex, like Silent Hill was the one that was one of the few horror games that I finished, mm -hmm. and those every single ending I was always disappointed with, just because uh, it's like a. Eh. So it's it's hard. I think it's hard with <laughs> multiple endings like that because, you know, which one is the best one? You know, with with the game like The Last of Us or other you know very story driven games, you know, there's the ending. Everything that they've built with the story so far is made to be you know with that ending in mind. I think with games where you have multiple endings, it's kind of like, it's sometimes it can seem less impactful. I don't know. But we kind of got off topic here. Layers of Fear, kind of cool. It's free, so there's not really a reason not to try it. You might like it. I did like it. Um, I streamed it the one day, stayed up way too late, uh, had to work the next morning. That sucked. But I will Yeah, you said I will you playing. weren't going to be that long, and then like yeah, two and, and a half hours like later, you're still hours. going. I was going to play it for like an hour, hour and a half, ended up playing it for two hours or two and a half hours, something like that. <laughs> 
That's on you, man. We said you didn't have yeah. to. Oh, I know. I know. No, that's what I mean. <laughs> that like, it was a good, good game, right? It like, was good enough that I wanted to play it, and I actually do want to finish it, and I want to complete this bingo card. I want to see if we can get a bingo through the game. Um, this is kind. Of, I like this bingo thing. I, uh, Josh did some Rocket League bingo, which was really cool. Oh yeah, I'm super. It's a cool that. format. It makes it interesting for streaming. Maybe we'll make like a series or something out of that at some time. Yeah, that'll we'll be cool. Uh, we we there got will some be software. A series. There will be a, actually. We have some Josh, software can you, developers here. Can you make here. us some make uh, some bingo cards for yeah, the actual one, podcast? He started them. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah, like so like check off Rocket League, bingo. Dark Souls, and I can see that. We can all of them happen. are just Dark Souls. Yeah. So There's, as soon as we each one is an instance of us mentioning it. Okay, yeah, we can do that. That'll Tom mentions Dark Souls, Josh mentions Dark Souls. Yeah. Good. Okay, we could do that. We can make that happen. <laughs> There, Dark Souls says there is a reason not to try the game. It's called "Fuck You." I'm scared. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, fair. that's good. There, there you go. <laughs> but yeah, the, it, its style of horror might be very effective for for people. It's paranormal for sure. Uh, cool game. But that's all I've played. Um, Eric, tell yes. us about what you've been playing. Please. So I'm really only going to talk about two things. The first one mm -hmm. is going to get some time because the first one is one of the biggest releases or one of them. Mm -hmm. There's This year has been fucking littered. It has been one of the best years we've had in a very long time for really. There's been, this is going to be a really hard year for gaming. That said, Super Mario Odyssey. Um, it came late. I got it Saturday. Uh, within eight hours, I beat the story. The story itself oh. is not very long. However, mm -hmm. there is still probably two-thirds of the game left to go. I oh, mean, you okay. beat the game, and then there's still more areas you haven't gotten to. There's, I know of at mm -hmm. least two additional areas I have been after the credits that wasn't before. Okay. So, mm, it, there's, nice. a, there's a lot of game. Um, world design in this game is fantastic. Um, so much better than Super Mario 64 because Mario 64 was very heavily dependent. Tom and I have talked about this before about what star you're going after or how you jumped into the picture, which is a cool mechanic, but stuff like that. Um, however, this one is not like that. The world is just one big ass world. Um, and the only thing that changes is after you beat the boss, the world completely opens. Other than that, huh. nothing. Hmm. It was really, really good world design. Typically, here is the cycle, the loop, you shall say, for Mario. Okay. The hat lands on a planet. You're told you need to get X number of moons while beating a boss area. You go, you run to the boss, you beat him. It sends you back to the ship, and you get the rest of the moons you need. You can get mm -hmm. the rest of the moons during the run to the boss, but once you get the moons, go to the next area, have to get X more moons. It's the general loop that progresses you through. Um, okay. Each level, you tend to need a little more stuff. Uh, moves, I should say. You need to start mastering a little more of the moves. Um, with this thing called Cappy. Cappy is mm. this hat you throw on shit and take control of stuff. This hey. makes this game one of the best Mario games. Because it is not just Mario anymore. It is a blend between Mario and Kirby. Nice. Because when you throw this hat on something, you take control of it. You get its abilities. It's like Kirby eating someone. So I saw you throwing the hat on those bullet things and then flying it around. Yes. Nice um, bullet bill hat. <laughs> it, is, it is one of the cool things about this game that keeps it fresh. Is each world has different people that you take control of. Some of them will remain the same, like Goombas and Bullet Bills. But like you'll get little lava guys, or you'll get cheap, or chirp chirps, or cheap cheeps. I can never remember. The fish. Cheap cheeps. Uh, cheap cheeps. Chirp chirps. Um, and there's like these little worm thingy dudes. And there's a lot of things you take control of, which is really cool. Um, and it keeps it fresh. Um, at first, you'll take something like, well, that's a stupid ability. And then you'll see how they design the whole world around that ability. And you're like, oh, that is really, really fucking cool. So it's just done really well. Um, and like I said, after you beat it, there's a lot of post game. You... Um, mm. I, I won't say much. Um, in a couple of weeks, I might <laughs> say a little more because at that point, I feel yeah. it's safe timing. But this mm -hmm. is still only a week out. I'm not going to say too much. Um, those, those segments where it went from 3D to 2D were so cool. Yes. Okay. I will hit on that. Um, that is amazing. 
you go into these tunnels and you go from being 3D Mario running around to literally the sound switches to 8-bit music. The view oh, switches great. to you being plain 2D and you go through a 2D puzzle and you come out the other side and the music and everything switches back to 3D. It is so great. So great. And you know the best thing about all this? How much is a normal PC download for a game? Probably what? Uh, 40 gigs, 50 gigs? Uh, Super for, Mario um, Odyssey is only what? Six gigs? Oh, really? Yes. That's Mario so or Nintendo is fucking mad scientist when it comes to making stuff for their hardware. <laughs> I, I wouldn't say most games are 40, 50 gigs, so not. Uh, I would not either. Yeah. yeah. But, every but new, you know, every that's, game that's I've downloaded this year has been more than 40 gigs. You only play AAA releases. The last game I downloaded was 5 megs. Tom, I'm, I'm talking, yeah, I'm comparing same. Mario. <laughs> if I'm comparing Mario yeah. to something, it's going to be AAA releases that I've been playing lately. Yeah, but a game like that, it's not exactly, you know, Horizon Zero Dawn fidelity. Dude, this game is really but, uh, pretty. No, it doesn't. All you nice. need, all you need is 8.4 megabytes. You know what you can fit but, in 8.4 megabytes? <laughs> Mario 64, but, bitch. While we're on the subject, <laughs> did you guys see that thing where the Switch version of LA, LA Noir doesn't fit on the Switch? Yes. Oh, really? Yes. yes. Yeah, oh, Tom and I were talking about this. <laughs> SD card. Oh, my God. And here's the kicker. <laughs> so not, so not funny. only that. Not yeah. only that. So, uh, Irk, Irk, go ahead. I'll let okay. you take this one. So the kicker is, um, so if it doesn't fit on there, you can always buy the cart, right? You don't need to mm -hmm. get the digital download. Um, the Switch has 32 gigs available. Six gigs are automatically dedicated to um, OS. So, okay, you got like, eh, what did that be? Bad math, Eric. 26 gigs, something like that. Mm -hmm. You get the cart, you still have a day one patch of 14 gigs. <laughs> So you're not getting much relief from going with the cart. And let me let me go look up how old this game is because you shouldn't ever have a 15, 14 gig fucking day one patch for a game that came out, what, eight, 10 years ago? I'm, but I'm however, you guys are telling me that eight gigs is the normal size when it's a fucking 14 gig patch for a 10 year old game. That's ridiculous. I, I don't see how they're related, but it's completely ridiculous. <laughs> But either way, so it's fucking absurdness. But yes, L.A. Noir is that that shit's garbage. What's happening there? <laughs> um, and then okay, other thing it came been, out. It came out six years ago, so it's not ten years oh, old. It's six, six years old. You hate to see it. Still, still. yeah, closer to ten than zero. <laughs> it's yeah. on the wrong side of five. But either that way, that is rid no, no, <laughs> <laughs> no. By rounding standards, it goes to ten, not zero. What's oh the standards God. of roundings? Can we break that down? Irk's Irk yeah. standards of rounding. It's <laughs> Irk math. We can we just go go away point from five. this. It's Irk point math. five it's goes like to math. one. <laughs> it's typical math. Anyway, um, other thing I've been playing is uh, Dota two. Uh, Dota two just All had right. a huge update that was nine that gigs. Was um, yes, I'm going to start hammering home these sizes. Um, and it introduced a new mode. Said. Hey. -oh. <laughs> Um, entering it. in a new mode called Turbo Mode. Um, turbo. I have played this. Um, I know a couple of my friends have played this. Tom has played this. Um, oh, it's, does Tom not so, classify? No, as no. I was friends? saying other I'm people. A, I really don't. <laughs> I'm not a Dota player, but just let me guess. Is it perhaps faster paced than original Dota? Yes. Well, we'll give that away. Dota doesn't need to be faster paced. Everybody's got an hour and a half to play around. <laughs> so, so how is um, it? <laughs> what happens is typically a match at Dota would be 40 to 50 minutes. A uh, long match could go an hour and a half. The longest match of this I've had so far has been 30 minutes. Most of them ending in a oh. 15 to 18 minute period. That's so what they do is they give you quicker gold, quicker experience. The towers you're destroying have less health and you can buy any item anywhere. That changes everything. It doesn't and, change and everything, but it changes it, some stuff. No, it changes. It changes a whole lot. And here's why. So usually when it, coming from a support player, right, I'm the guy who's buying all the shit items. I'm not getting any experience. Like it's kind of a shit deal playing support. Some will mm -hmm. say, oh, hey, buy some wards. We need some vision over here. So you're like, OK, cool. You buy some wards, but you can't just like grab them. Right They're They're back at the shop. You're over in lane trying to keep your your uh, main dude alive, you're trying to keep your carry alive so they can go wreck shit later in the game. And 
you've got to fetch the courier, but you can't use the courier because your guy in mid is using the courier and you can't take it because you're a low priority support player. So who gives a fuck about you and your life? So you either have to run all the way back to the shop or you got to wait. This changes the game for support people because instead of doing the whole thing of waiting for the courier, you can just say, oh, boom, wards, slam them down. You're done. TP scrolls, I don't even carry them anymore. You just buy them right then and you teleport. It's great. Um, it but the TP scroll game's been different anyway, though. Not because ever really. since they've it's, added the extra slots, the TP shit's been different because it no longer really just, eats into just you. Just a little bit because it's six seconds. In six seconds, when you need to instantly teleport somewhere, is way slower than right click on the TP scroll icon, double click on the TP scroll, no, you're done. It's not that simple because if it was going to be in your sub slot anyway, that means you're currently six slotted now. So you actually have to move something before you buy. There's still Next the delay. Week on Dota. <laughs> <laughs> and so, we've lost all the non dota slayers. Yes. You, know, you, know. you so, guys want to come back in the next 30 minutes? It, it does change. It does change some stuff. I still feel the game feels <laughs> the same. The game feels the same. They didn't compromise the game by doing this. I, I, don't, think, I don't think they compromised the game, but it absolutely does not feel the same. Um, and, and here's why. I want to play it again. So before, I couldn't actually sit down and dedicate an hour of my life to shitty teammates and taking forever. But with Overwatch, you know, shitty teammates and taking 20 minutes, that's, that's fine. Because there's only a certain amount of pissed off you can get in 20 minutes. If you expand that to an hour, the possibilities of being pissed are endless. Um, <laughs> Now that a Dota match takes 20 minutes, you might be able to stomach two or three before you rage quit. It, it changes the whole game for me. I might go back to Dota now. <laughs> two or three games, holy crap. Right? So I'll still <laughs> never play Dota. But this <laughs> that closer to me almost not never playing Dota. <laughs> Same. <laughs> anyway, Tom, what else have you been playing other than Dota? Jack shit, just Dota. What games have been breaking for you recently <laughs> other than Dota? All right, so uh, I played some Battle Knight or Battle Knight. That's a that's a cool new game that nobody's ever heard of. <laughs> Fortnite Battle Royale, um, oh. which is which is still good. Um, we should talk about that for ten to twelve minutes. Yeah, we should. <laughs> so the new Wait a minute. changes <laughs> yeah, everything. Let's compare, it, let's compare it to Battleground some more. Yeah. Oh yeah, let's wasn't uh, done with that. The gunplay right. just isn't really that good. Yeah, there's no Battlegrounds. It's yeah. No, no. All right. PUBG's gunplay is shit. Um, oh damn! Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, yeah, now, I said it. Opinion number twelve. I said it. Um, <laughs> uh, played played a little bit more Overwatch. It's still fun. Uh, the Halloween event ended, which is I think better. I like the brightly colored maps. Um, Axiom Verge. Uh, the story is starting to open up a bit more. Uh, I don't know how much longer I've got to go, but mm -hmm. I'm really enjoying the game. Um, I actually sat down and made some progress a couple days ago. Nice. Um, Wolfenstein 2, the new Colossus. Not not Spear of Destiny, the one that actually came out like last month. Um, oh, so, nice. yeah, I, I read some reviews. I bought it new on Steam uh, and I played it for like three and a half hours. So I'm not I'm not too terribly long into mm -hmm. the game. Um, single player only, no multiplayer. And these guys don't fuck around with anything. Um the start of the game, like the first hour of the game is so hardcore and brutal and ridiculous and just outlandish. Like yeah. you go into the game, you're like, all right, it's Wolfenstein. Let's kill some Nazis because yeah. fuck Nazis. Right. Yeah. But I didn't know I could hate Nazis anymore, but somehow they make the villains in this game so despicable and so <laughs> horrible that you hate Nazis even worse than when you first started playing the game. And I am three hours in. That's awesome. Um, Excellent. I really like what they've done with the characters. It's not, you know, brutality and violence for the sake of brutality and violence. It's got a point behind it. Um, there, there are some things I don't like. Uh, Blaskowitz, the, your main character, is pretty whiny, um, at least in the early game. Uh, but, you know, you're, you're killing Nazis. Uh, the level design is fantastic. You can either sneak around and stab everybody in the back and be really quiet, or you can go in holding two giant machine guns dual wielding them. And the, the game never forces you to choose either of those. If you wanted to start stealthy and go you know, all out, you can totally do that. If you want to go out all out and then find a corner and hide for a little bit, then go stealthy. You can do that too. Um, 
So we'll we'll have to see where this ends up. The game is um, just great and difficult. Um, mm -hmm. So we'll see. But I haven't been able to play recently, sadly yeah. enough. Oh, um, yeah. So, so what happened next? Yeah, <laughs> October thirtieth, Bethesda released a patch, um, and none of my textures load. Everything stays oh. just totally black. It's really weird. The only thing I can see on character models are their hair and eyeballs. It's really spooky. Oh, I like uh, it. Yeah, I love it. I was like, I was like, this <laughs> doesn't look right. Something is yeah. clearly broken here. And I walked up to somebody and just eyes. And I was like, oh, <laughs> fuck. All right. I didn't know it was that type of game. Um, but yeah, apparently the, uh, the update they pushed broke rendering on older graphics drivers. So. I did the natural thing. I said, cool, let me update my graphics drivers. But for the card I'm using, uh, which granted is a specialty card, um, doesn't have any newer drivers available, even in beta. So for the moment, I cannot play Wolfenstein. Oh, it's oh. a known issue. They will fix it. Um, you could always in-house yeah. stream it, though, couldn't you? Um, no, no, because it's actually it's on the rendering side. Oh, no. you mean you mean play on a different you, machine your, with a you, different card? Yes. You mean use like a traditional setup to play? <laughs> That's what <laughs> I'm saying. Would Tom would never do such a thing. <laughs> Why would I do that? What um, even I actually, a setup? <laughs> uh, I actually I did install it and I I double clicked it over on this other machine with a totally different card and I updated the drivers last night um, and it crashes on launch. So nice. I like that. It's good update. Uh, yeah, apparently <laughs> this is a really big issue uh, all over the Steam forums. People are complaining about blacked out textures, crashes on launch, general instability with the game. Uh, I guess the patch they pushed out is just dog shit. Um, yeah. But such is the life of a PC gamer where somebody can just willy nilly break the shit out of your games because they feel like it. So thanks, Bethesda. You're really keeping up the Bethesda way. Though I, I do have to call this out. Isn't this technically yeah. id? Um, yes and no. If if it's just it, if I blame it, it's not as funny as blaming Bethesda because they always release broken shit. So mm -hmm. I'm going to blame true. Bethesda. Um, oh, also, uh, my portion of the podcast is brought to you by T-Mobile. For when Comcast fucks you over, T-Mobile is there to save the day. Thanks, T-Mobile. Hey, thanks. <laughs> so while we're on uh, Wolfenstein 2, did you guys see any of the, the censored German version of the game? Oh yeah! Yes, you showed me some of those screenshots. The, that was funny. The, the, the part there's a part in the game where there's Hitler, surprisingly, but obviously they can't do that because censorship in in uh, Germany is kind of weird when it comes to this stuff in video games. So it shows this guy, and it's Hitler, but they removed the mustache. It's so good. Like <laughs> they don't. They didn't just remove like the swastikas and all the whole game. They removed the mustache. I thought that was funny. Technically, awesome. legally, you cannot have Hitler imagery in Germany. So they couldn't put a character model of Hitler. But some guy Not that looks strange. Anyway. Yes. Some guy that looks strangely like Hitler, but without a mustache is totally fine. Well, that's awesome. I like how like really key figures have iconic somethings. Yeah. <laughs> and Hitler's is the mustache. That's great. <laughs> I almost went somewhere with that. Okay. Um, what else you got, Tom? Anything else break your system this week? Uh, no, I, I think that's about it. Uh, I would like to call out Comcast again for being flaming piles of shit. May you all die in a rotting hellfire. Damn. Oh. We do that not endorse great, Comcast great on this podcast. No. Even though they make it necessary to podcast. But that is true. That's a good point. Comcast don't watch our podcast. <laughs> well, if Comcast watch our podcast. <laughs> Maybe we get good service. Yeah, maybe. Maybe. Probably I don't not. Know. Probably not. Yeah. Probably worse yeah. service, just saying. Anyway. Yeah, I'm not, <laughs> anyway. So yeah, that's, with, that's all I play. With that, um, that's all we got for games. Um, we are going to uh, Blitzkrieg <laughs> through these news articles. Um, so we'll, we'll get these kind of quick. Uh, EA announcing that they are removing guns from their loot box system. They still have loot boxes, but the In guns... Will not Star Wars be, Battlefront 2. Uh, yes, in Battlefront 2. The guns will not be behind a loot wall. Good. That's a good yes. That's a very good move on them. So That's they the right they had an push. open beta. They got a lot of feedback and they listened to the community on this one. So good on you, EA. 
Yeah, that's really good. That's a that's a step in the right direction, but we're still on to you. Yeah, Tom's I'm always going to say to fuck this up. Tom's <laughs> always going to blame launching. Bethesda for bugs, and he's going to blame EA for shitty monetization of games. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> he's going to blame Nintendo for being simultaneously the best thing that ever happened and the worst thing that ever happened. Yes. There you go. <laughs> um, Destiny Two. Uh, they've announced their new expansion. I don't have the name in front of me, but it will up maximum levels and it will max or up the maximum uh, light score or power score, power level, the gear rating. That's going to be up to the uh, podcast. Some of the community does. Uh, we have channels for them, but none of us own it. I will probably be getting it at the beginning of the next year. I probably will be getting into it to hold me over to Anthem. Yeah, you'll hear uh, a lot about it once that happens for sure. Yes. Uh, BlizzCon 2017. It's upon us. There's been all sorts of news. Uh, StarCraft- I can rock this out. Okay, go for it. All right. So, StarCraft 2, the base game, Wings of Liberty, the uh, Terran um, segment of the game, is going free to play. So, you can play online. If you wanted to get anywhere else, any other content, you will have to buy the expansions. Um, World of Warcraft, surprise, has a new expansion coming out. Um, no one bet on that because everybody knew it was coming. Uh, the thing that everyone didn't know was coming because everyone thought, well, Blizzard said we can't do this because it's a shit ton of work. World of Warcraft Classic. No expansion packs, no bullshit, just the same old World of Warcraft you played when you were 15. It's coming out. It has no release date yet, but they are working on it and it will be out sometime before we die um <laughs> Maybe. this will this will be the thing that drags me back to wow um call it now i'm gonna have a subscription uh, <laughs> overwatch gets a new character kind of a battle healer person looks cool uh new map also looks kind of cool it's like a blizzard theme park um hmm. yeah yeah so that's that's about it uh there's some heroes of the storm stuff but nobody cares because people play dota in the Last of Us 2 trailer, <laughs> which everybody does care. Uh, watch it. It's good. That's about it. <laughs> no, it's not. It's not good. Yeah, if everyone knows uh, like how good we are at news. <laughs> no, th- this one's actually a hot button item because a lot of people are not happy with it for different reasons, but Tom's not happy with it. But a lot of people are unhappy with it. It was literally violence for the sake of violence. It has nothing to do with the game, or, or very little to do with the game, if you're going to give them a, a bunch of credit. But it didn't come out. It didn't have main characters. It didn't show anything about the story. It just showed people getting the shit beat out of them for virtually no reason. No, um, it showed it exactly the reason. The, story, though. the fireflies That's is the, the reason. Story. I, it literally was the trailer came out just to get people to talk about it, just to be controversial. It honestly looks like a, a brutal snuff film for the sake of brutal snuff films. If you are trying to release Manhunt 3, releasing this trailer makes sense. If you're trying to release a story-driven game about you know some old dune and a sort of uh, adopted, almost daughter-like person making their way through a zombie-infested world, th- this didn't really do it for me. Why was the woman being persecuted? Is it her mother? Is it actually the fact that she was with the Fireflies as an experiment and that's why she's um, unable to be harmed by him? Why are they persecuting are the Fireflies so at this point? There are so many better ways to ask those questions other than <laughs> trying to hang a woman, beating someone's elbow into a pulp with a hammer, and then claw hammering two people in the face. Like Tom, Tom's new trailer. 15 no, paragraphs it. describing no, the yeah. game. Well, no, 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 no. Like, I'm, I'm with Tom on this one. Because, like, I did watch it, and it's it's not that great a trailer. Like, especially Naughty Dog. Like, Naughty Dog is great at trailers. Like, if you've watched yeah. a, 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 quite a few of them. This one is actually just one scene, one place, one action. There's no cin- cinematic feel to it. Like, it's just not... It's just someone... Granted, there is questions that are being populated there. There's, there's like, mm-hmm. oh, what's happening? What's going on? But, like... It doesn't. It, it 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 really doesn't do it for me. It doesn't spell Last of Us to me. It doesn't spell a, Naughty Dog to me. It doesn't. It doesn't. Like Naughty Dog's been really great at story so far. Every game I've played from Naughty Dog has been like very great. It's sort of like except for like Crash Bandicoot, <laughs> yeah. but it's been really, it's been really good, right? Um, that one didn't really 
do it. But it's just a trailer, it's, so I yeah. don't care. It didn't, it's, it's not, it's not their main trailer. About the story. It didn't tell me anything about the characters. All it showed was brutal violence. Now, if I want to buy a game all about brutal violence and I watch the trailer for Doom, I know what I'm getting into. To me, based only on this trailer, The Last of Us is about hanging random people, stabbing people in the gut, and using hammers to beat people's brains out. Like That is the entire game of The Last of Us, according to this trailer. Well, you realize one the first the trailer... Trailers. Yeah, there yeah. was another. This is not, one of the, the uh, first of the trailer first. I saw was great. It had a yeah. guitar in the background. It had Ellie. It it had enough like spooky, scary, violent stuff. Like the um, fuck. Why can't I remember their name? The weird, you know, zombie ish people. Mm -hmm. Um, none of them were in there. None of them at all were in there. All it was was a girl sitting on a bed playing a guitar. What are you talking about? Yeah, that girl sitting on the bed of the guitar was Ellie. No, 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 no. I, don't add too much to it. I'm just saying that's all it was. It's just a girl sitting on a bed playing a guitar. Right, that's but there was, a lot of depth, there was a lot of depth to that. because well, there's that depth was... in this, potentially. No, there's not. There's no depth in this. There's none at all. It's a, a fucking snuff film. There's no story. Like when Joel, presumably Joel, right? We didn't know from the first trailer. Um, when he says, you know, so what are you going to do? And she says, I'm going to kill them all. That's a that's a like a little golden nugget of story, right? Yeah. It's like holy shit, this is where things are going. This is what the mission is. Right. I cannot wait. I have to so, figure out what goes on. Or when this, this woman's being hung and they say we're going to kill yeah. this, cut this disease out of you. No, that kind of hints so, at what's going on. So here's here's the thing with this trailer. It's kind of a brutal trailer, but it's not any more brutal than anything that was in The Last of Us One. But right. that being said. This trailer probably has some significant story implications that we don't know yet because we haven't played the game. And yes, maybe the trailer isn't that great of a trailer to promote a game, but that doesn't, I mean, there's no reason to be up in arms about it. I, right. can't I, judge the I remember the first the trailer. Only, like the first the only reason. Well, well the, the first trailer for this game, for like Last of Us 1, one of the, like, the first gameplay trailers, it goes through this whole like thing where they're going through and they're and they're fighting some guys and they beat them up and at the very last cut scene last portion of it the guy begs for his life before you eventually kill him yes. right like, and keep in mind the girl smashes a dude's skull with a brick in that yeah. right but that was again that was gameplay trailer this is this is a different situation like i i, I think this this might be a better scene actually in the game in context exactly like, exactly like really in, in context what it's, about, what it's more about to me is like okay i get it they're trying to say like this is the thing not holding back the fireflies be... a bunch of stuff going on you don't know what it's about i want to entice you blah blah, blah. i get it right i, I do get in, it in like, context this would have been a fantastic scene because we would have known what's going on as a trailer it utterly fails because all it shows is sheer violence without any point it doesn't make me want to buy the game if i had never played the game before i don't know what a fucking firefly is i don't know what fucking clip her wings means right as right. a trailer it is utterly devoid of meaningful content Right, I'm it's, with you on that. Yeah. It's I like a game not directly a... towards the people who really paid attention in the first game. Yeah, right. and the people and, who and really they, paid attention in the first game are already, are already going to buy the, the first, second yeah. game. It's so kind of the, who the, the fuck is this trailer for? Yeah, you could you could literally put a video of them watching TV. And you're like, how did they get TV? I'm buying this game. Like, right, <laughs> exactly. Exactly. You know, like, like it, it's really it, it really wouldn't take much for a person that played the original Last of Us to buy Last of Us Two because they left like, so much hanging. Ellie could have could have like leaned over and said, "Hey, we got any more fucking Doritos?" You're just like, "Oh my god." There's Doritos in their world. Everything <laughs> yeah. is, is better. What's going on? I have to know, Naughty Dog. And they would go buy systems to play this game to figure out where the Doritos came from. Yeah, exactly. So the point is, is like the whole point of having a uh, like a teaser trailer or a trailer in general is to bring in more people. Like, I don't feel like this one does it. And I get, I get both ends. Like, I get it. Like, it's trying to say something. But it's really not saying what I think it should say, especially because the of the depth and complexity of this actual story. Like Neil Druckmann is, has nailed this story so far, and I think they really fell short. It actually makes me worry that the game itself won't live up to the hype. Also, and just keep in mind, the audience of this wasn't the normal crowd. This was a huge Sony conference thing. 
Mm-hmm. Right. But it was no, released to that. people on the inside. Right, but at the same time, like those Sony conference uh, trailers get eventually released in the same way. Like yeah. it's not like, oh, these guys are the only one that'll ever see this. <laughs> no, it's you not know, like that. They, but they, this isn't. It's not a backroom trailer at QuakeCon. No, no. What I'm saying is, this video, isn't like, the, like June 2016, right? This was right. a very publicly made trailer, and Naughty Dog knew exactly what they were doing. I honestly believe this is a trailer just to play up controversial issues and get yeah. people talking about it. It's an eyeball thing. It's fucking clickbait. Yeah, it is clickbait. I agree. I agree God, wholeheartedly. It's this is clickbait. What they said about it. The violence you see inside this world isn't gratuitous and over the top just for the sake of being violent. It's setting a tone. It's setting a reality a reality that Joel and Ellie are having to deal with. Everything has to feel tense. Everything has to feel grounded in reality. The reason why we're going for such realistic violence is because we want you to believe that the stakes are high for Ellie and Joel. Then right, show no, Ellie it. and Joel. Show Ellie and Joel. Don't show some random characters that nobody has any fucking <laughs> connection to. I'm gonna play this game expecting to to play as like Broken Arms Girl, and I'm not gonna be able to, and that's gonna piss me off because I want to play as Broken Arms Girl. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I just, I just actually, we we will, we will be playing this game. I will absolutely yeah. be playing this game, and we'll have a long-winded discussion about yeah. how this trailer compared to the actual game and whether or not the game lived up. <laughs> And when anyway, you play as broken yeah, arms yeah. girl, I will hold it in Tom's yeah. face. And, Damn it, motherfucker, you play as broken arms girl. <laughs> I, I wait for it. I will buy the game and the system. I actually won't. I'm just saying that. Um, anyway, about there, was, more, there was a little bit more news. Uh, we'll speed through real quick. Happy, happy news. Uh, Motiga has mostly been shut down by a perfect world, um, which is their parent company. Uh, they create uh, created gigantic. Uh, so enough people are being left over to basically make sure the game doesn't fall over. Uh, Runic Games, who made Torchlight and Torchlight 2, has been completely shut down by uh, Perfect World, which sucks because those games were great. Um, but the yeah. games are still there. Not so, so. not so Perfect World for uh, Runic yeah. Games. Um, GameStop is issuing a new program. They are actually this doing good things for customers. They are introducing a Blockbuster Pass style. Thing going on you pay sixty dollars and for six months you get to come in and rent for free well not for free you're paying 60 bucks but rent used games go in grab a used game walk out at the end of that three six month period you get to keep a game this is a really 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 good business model i really like this so we're uh you know netflix and um yeah netflix basically ruined all video rental stores and with that went video game rentals which really sucks i mean gamefly is okay uh but i stopped using it forever ago when i started playing pc games um for people who still own consoles you know the places to rent games have kind of dwindled over the years there's not really a bunch of selection and gamestop is going to bring it back um and you know 60 bucks for six months that's not bad. You can come in and play whatever you want and find something great. Play a lot of shitty things. You know, who, who gives a fuck? The only thing you're wasting is time. And then at the end of it, for 60 bucks, you can get, you know, a $50 used game if that's the one you want. It's, I think this is great. It is good for people. Um, I really like this. Uh, it's, it's something that, you know, maybe when the Switch gets a bigger library, I might go buy a GameStop Power Pass just to play a bunch of weird shit on the Switch that I don't want to pay for. Based on past GameStop news that we've covered, uh, it sounds like they're not doing very well. So something like this might yeah. be good for them. <laughs> yeah. you know, Oh, it's absolutely done for a reason. But, like but Their numbers like are service. terrible. It's the same thing where like Blockbuster at the very end was pretty much just come in and grab this shit and just leave some money on the floor when you leave. That's their <laughs> only way the business would succeed. <laughs> So it's just good to see that they're doing something customer centric, even though it might be what's saving their own ass. Yeah. Um, and then the Olympic committee, uh, the uh, actual IOC is saying that they will um, possibly allow esports to join the Olympics, but esports needs a central governing body. So as awesome what? as it sounds that the Olympics might allow other esports in, they're requiring esports to meet the criteria of other sports that are in the Olympics. Which one of the so, big things is you have to have a central governing body for your sport, like FIFA so for like soccer. So like Overwatch League. 
No, 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 no. They they need a central governing body for esports, e-sports. not oh, for like globally. Overall. Yes, not for Dota, not for Overwatch, not for League of Legends, not for Counter Strike. For esports, is what they're saying. Wow, that almost now. doesn't make sense. It doesn't. It because doesn't they at don't all. Understand but, the space. But what do you expect from uh, you know IOC President uh, Thomas Bach called out video games as about explosions, violence, and killing? It. So yeah, I'm that's... not going to give this any fucking credence. Yes, they said, oh, yeah, sure, you can be in the Olympics if you do all these things, and they laid it out. Yeah, that's that's all well and good, but when you assume that games are only about violence and killing and they have no redeeming artistic or entertainment properties, it, the battle's already over, right? Fuck the Olympics, we'll make our own. Well, no, the IOCA right. is corrupt as shit, and the head of it doesn't have the say, which is why this probably went through, is because he didn't have the say. Um, I we think can just leave it as corrupt as shit. Like, I'm good with that. <laughs> I think this is going to happen, though. I think what's going to happen is they're going to iterate over this and realize what they're saying is like saying all of the athletics need, need one. Does it need to? I, I don't think, think it does. Like, like I, I will watch the Overwatch World Series, right? I watched some today or the, the World Championships um, mm-hmm. that they were hosting at BlizzCon. I watched the International every year, which is a big ass international event that valve sponsors right league yes. of legends has giant tournaments right. you're, you're missing I don't the point we need I, I don't missing... think we need the rings attached to esports it doesn't give us anything except a fucking logo and maybe some legitimacy in the eyes of old people but who the fuck cares about them no no e-sports it gives is you, our thing it gives you right, eyes. It's legitimacy in the eyes of old people they're do, gonna do, be like get that crap out of our olympics okay so yeah I exactly this is this is gonna turn out exactly like dota on espn old people are gonna get pissed and fuck them. Who cares, right? We can watch this shit on Twitch and throw a bunch of money at compendiums and in, in virtual items that don't actually exist. Okay, so let right. me break it's, down the marketing nice. end cool. of this for but you. I don't... Yeah. You're missing a big piece of the puzzle is you're going to get your organizations in front of a lot of people. Yeah. A lot more than what your Dota International is right now because the Olympics are fucking gold, man. People watch those. They watch people row fucking boats. They watch people jump over fucking sticks. They watch people shoot clay discs out of the sky. They don't care what the <laughs> fuck it is. They're just watching it because people go that don't America. Even watch sports. People that don't even watch sports will watch the Olympics. That's the biggest That's thing. Is it Even if 90% of those people that watch don't give two shits, maybe 2% will check it out that have never seen it before. And that 2% is a lot of people. I think this will turn out exactly like Dota and Counter-Strike being on ESPN has, which is, what the fuck is this shit all over Twitter? For the most people, yeah. Yeah, but once again, you do get some people to come in, though, because of it. Most people don't. Most people bounce. But you have to remember, when you're dealing with millions of people, a little percentage is a lot of people. Do you want eyeballs where the majority is going to fucking hate you? Like, I I think esports is fine where it is, right? Blizzard is doing fantastic things with taking the kind of the overlord approach to esports and valve is doing great things when it comes to the i don't know man just like do what you feel like the hippie version of managing esports and i think (laughs) both are great and both are going to make a shit ton of money valve is already making a shit ton of money off every single international and every single counter-strike tournament hey by the way we will be at the uh intel extreme masters this uh this uh what is it the 26 i think it is yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah, me and Winnie will be there. Nice. nice. So, so I'll I'll be relaying about that for as far as Counter Strike's concerned. It should be good. But anyway. yeah, I I don't I I guess this is nice. It's nice that they said anything regarding esports, but I just I don't see a bunch of benefit here. I see a lot of benefit myself, but I, it's yeah. You need to broaden it. The way esports is currently running itself, it's making a lot of money now, but it's not setting... Overwatch the only one setting itself for long term. A lot of money with flipovers and teams constantly is not a way to make long term success. That's a way Maybe to make a is. lot of money now. No, because... You, you know, know, like, no, to be honest, like, like everything is so much faster now. Every step that we've taken in, like, towards the future has just been faster and faster like like the one of the best ways to increase your paycheck is to switch jobs as rapidly as possible you know like it's just kind of a thing maybe maybe having not static teams is the best way to have the best team i don't know it's contracts so people can make a living if someone can't knowingly make a living on it you're not going to get no, the no, best. That makes, I mean, you're not that going makes to get the best unless so, you know so they like, can live with off of it. With esports, with Dota at least, 
people people don't just root for eg right they don't just root for team secret they say oh my god i love dendy and whatever team he's on that's my team or i love fear for me you know i i watch for navi and they suck most of the time but i keep watching because dendy is there that's right? just i'm really sports. excited that fear is coming back i'm i'm really excited about you know black and, and all these other esports personalities i don't need to follow a specific team i don't need to follow liquid i don't need to follow any of these people because i i follow the individual personalities and i think for dota that's the way it's going to work overwatch is taking a totally different direction and i think both are very valid options i'd like to see where where it evolves to like at this point at this point we're getting you know kind of both especially with the overwatch doing overwatch doing what it wants to do like the overwatch league and all that mm -hmm. like um i like that i like that because it's more rooted in how our lives work you know you get up you drink your coffee you go to work you come home like that's the idealistic kind of view right and your go to work is like you know you go and play for your sports team you know and that's the that's the idea that they're working with whereas like esports now is more like hey i'm marketing myself as who i am and my me as a player and as that evolves you know like you just keep marketing yourself and if you end up on fanatic or you end up on cloud nine great or you have a bad but tournament like, and you just lost ten thousand dollars and you never get another gig because your contract's not for sure eh, bye bye <laughs> <laughs> well i mean there's more to it than that especially at the highest level there's such a crazy swing on as far as that's concerned but those guys you know they make they make money they do fine they switch teams they do and just because they don't do well in a tournament teams don't drop players because they do bad in a tournament they just don't like they do not, they absolutely do I well, they do in a certain in a certain sense of the word but if you have like shroud team team secret team secret changes their players more often than they change their underwear right but i mean you have people like you have other teams that don't like you get on with like a good team you're going to be fine if you if you're trying your best and you're doing very very well and you're actually like the top you're gonna be fine but i mean to didn't be there the runner is an insane team, amount of work didn't the runner-up team in rlcs like two three rlcs's ago actively pursue other players once they got runners up well that was mock it mock it's corrupt as fuck as i all really teams. that's how i feel how teams most are esports no, teams no, are no 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 like because okay so nrg if you want to talk rocket league nrg has come anywhere from not making it entirely to like third place but they never even won anything and energy has been with and they've been with them from the get-go rogue is barely pulling off wins g2 doesn't do anything for the most part and they're all still with their original players they're not dropping players mm -hmm. they're doing fine granted that like i mean that's not the like that's fine that that is what it is there's a whole bunch of teams that still have the original cast and they keep swapping people in and out uh season two and season one is what you're talking about season one and season two was basically a free-for-all and everyone was just grabbing for whoever was available because it was a brand new esport it still is a brand new esport the only people that stuck together was Flipside, and now they're old hats and they're barely pulling off making it into land they didn't make it into land this round this round so we'll see where that evolves thing is is that's not really the norm rocket league's not the norm they're uh, they're an emerging esport so it's really hard to say like that but when you come down to like something like counter strike a lot of those guys that are like top players you know that's a, that's that's a that's a tier one esport a lot of those guys that are top players if they're still top players and they don't like they don't do the best like they don't get first they're not going to get dropped they're still top players, mm -hmm. you know, granted, like if someone like underperformed and they were not doing well because they've been playing PUBG all day, they're going to be dropped. But you don't need they're to protect for realistic reasons. The idea is you don't need to worry about protecting the top. You need to worry about protecting the rest. Protecting the rest is unrealistic, though, because the thing is, is that's me. No, 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 no. It's, and it's not unrealistic, <laughs> like, though. I mean, actual sports do this. Esports, yeah, and but like, there's sports also are like the a, same like, when it comes to that, right? Like, but like everybody that's in that goes to a gym and plays basketball has has dreams about being a professional athlete. And then when they get know, signed to a team, they get a contract that says, "Yes, you are with us." 
Yeah, but they're therefore fucking insane. dedicate your time they're to. They're insane at what they do. If they get so, to the level so of what, signing what a contract, we'll they're insane. What like, we'll they're not see like is we'll <laughs> see who is going to have the most successful esports, right? And it's it frankly, the answer is probably both because both of these these companies are extremely successful in whatever they do, right? You've right. got Valve taking the hippie approach to esports. You've got Blizzard taking the classical American sports model of esports. And frankly, both of them are probably valid. We're, we're going to have to see where the players go because let's all remember, right? Valve and Blizzard both have games that compete with each other. Uh, I don't think TF2 is trying to become an esport, but Here's the Storm certainly is. And that competes directly with Dota. So if people say, eh, you know, the Dota scene is really fucking chaotic. I think I need some more stability. And they go play Here's the Storm. They could actually do that. They could totally pull that off. Blizzard isn't putting as much into that as they are into Overwatch, but we'll have to see. Right. Yeah, it's a, it's crazy. It, it really is a thing as sports are concerned. That's why like a lot of people aren't investing. It might it might even come down to like it really, really honestly might just come down to the orgs. Like which groups are they going to pay for? You know, you know, oh, you don't know. Oh, I, I heard orcs and I got really confused. <laughs> oh, yeah. It really like, like, where do these orcs, orcs come into here? What about all these orcs, orcs in esports? This is becoming a problem. With but, yeah. The, <laughs> anyway, though, I think that's pretty much all we have for you guys this week, though. Anyone else have any other news we missed? Oh, yeah. Uh, Call of Duty World War II came out. Uh, not many reviews out yet because it just released yesterday, but it's out. Your mom Zing. came out. IGN gives you a 10 out of 10. <laughs> hey, yo. Zing. He but did it. Anyway, Zing. time for the rundown. So, for all of you out there listening to us live right now, you can always jump over to our um, YouTube channel at 72 Pin Connector and uh, check out all the content we have there. We've been adding up some of the series we've been doing, Lost and Founds, uh, Jolly Rogers Cooperation, and all that fun stuff. Jolly Rogers. Jolly Rogers. <laughs> Jolly Rogers. Um, Jolly Rogers. If you're at our YouTube, um, you can always come hang out with us live Saturday nights, typically starting at 9 p.m. Eastern time, if we don't have Comcast issues. Be live with us, <laughs> interact in the chat, have fun with us. Um, if you hate our content, you think that we drone too much, or we don't talk about good shit, or Tom just needs to get better internet, you can always go to twitter and tweet at us at 72 pc podcast also if, tweet at comcast cares yes please um if you would like to get our podcast um actual the podcast podcast you could always um go to podcast the apps like google play itunes <laughs> to get it there or if you need your rss feeds go to 72 pinconnector.com <laughs> Um, and then finally, if you want to email us a good old fashioned email, you can always go to fan mail at 72 pinconnector.com <laughs> and shoot us some emails. Um, Adam, do we have any parting wishes we'd like to send out? We do. We had a bunch of people cheer stuff this cast, which is pretty neat because what? that's a new thing for us. Double Digo cheered us five bits with Digo. the emote cheer five. V Dobby cheered us a hundred bits with the emote PJ salt 100. Uh, not Josh. I don't know who that is. Uh, he also he cheered <laughs> two hundred and fifty bits. Says Ooh, Rip Comcast. I roll a Rip Comcast. <laughs> Double Digo cheered another five, and then he cheered another five, and then AOL Instant Messenger cheered one, and then he proceeded to cheer sixty nine. <laughs> Had to make it that even seven. God damn it! Got got to make and it even seven. Yeah. So anyway, thank you for all of that stuff. That's awesome. So with that, um, I think that's all we got for you guys this week. So until next week, y'all. Actually, real quick, Brahalla, five minutes. Brahalla, be there. Join us. Join us in the Discord. Get in it's, the Discord. We will post links in chat. Scroll down. Discord is actually linked in our Twitch. Click on it. Get in there. Until next week, though. Game on. <laughs> Bye, everybody. <laughs>